Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, ready for your morning coffee or your afternoon uh, drink of water or whatever you're gonna be doing while you're watching this. I certainly hope that um, many of these videos have been helpful. We're trying to get little quick gifts ready for you so that during holiday time, people can make a couple of quick things and don't have to think about a lot of extra things. So this is one that I'm going to really have fun with today. Now this is gonna be a shorter video, but I'm still gonna cover some of the steps with it. I wanna first tell you about one of the most important things that I just love, which is behind me. And this is the bird quilt, we call it. You can kind of see in the triangle here, the different uh, quilting designs that have been done. It's just a beautiful quilt and it was um, all kitted for us. And I believe we have a couple left. So this is the time during Christmas holiday that you want to grab these because you won't get them afterwards. Once they're gone, they don't make these up again. So I would encourage you highly. This is what we call the bird quilt, but it actually is called Snowbirds, Snowbirds Gold, which is kind of fun. Then I want to show you another one, which I love. And this is the Snowflake Stripes. We're gonna actually show that I think in January because this can be used all through the winter. And then we have another favorite of mine. This one um, is called the Gradient uh, Holiday. It's a Christmas tree panel. And this is all out of grunge fabric. This you can put together in a couple hours. It's a very simple one and it's just fun to have on your holiday wall or across your couch. And, the Christmas season. So enjoy some of these quilts. I think we'll have them online so you can see what's going on with them. The um, project that we're going to do today is a very simple pillow. But before I get into it, I wanna show you, I don't know how many of you have not signed up yet or have signed up for License to Create. We um, have had a really wonderful response. We have, I believe, eight left. Well, maybe not quite that many. I think maybe five or six left. And these are 12 different projects that are created now and through January. They will be uh, saved for you on virtual. We actually do quite a few of them live. And you will be able to go back and look at them and really uh, look at all of the different things that are being done. Debbie's doing, she's the one that's doing this. She does our Kimberville too. And it's very similar projects, only a lot more involved, not more involved, simpler actually, but a lot of really fun things that you might not have thought about doing before. This one she's doing with a little tree with chenille. We did one I noticed with puffy foam. She did another one with the mylar applique. And then there was um, a really fun little uh, chenille design on another pillow. So some really great ideas. I hope you'll take advantage of it. This, I want you to know about two other things that are coming up. One is almost filled virtually, and that's almost impossible, but it really is getting there. And that's the one coming up this coming Friday on December 11th. That's the OESD virtual quilting event. And it is, um, I think, I know there's close to 200 people now. So I would definitely get your name on that. This is actually free. It's from 11 to 1230. And it's a quilting event sponsored through OESD, which I think is a wonderful company of designs and quilting. Then we did, because it's been so successful, another one for the um, January, because January is going to be here before we know it. And you know that's when we get a lot of snow, and regardless of COVID, you're snowed in or whatever. So we're definitely going to um, do a really fun project on January 19th. And it's a lace design, and you can kind of see by this flyer, that this little snowman, the little houses, the, uh, I love the, the uh, lantern and the um, um, lighthouse. I think that's really, really cute. So lots of ideas for um, doing lace work. Now let's get into our project. And it, somebody asked me last week, by the way, so let me quickly cover that. What I'm holding here, this is a little, it's 20 some bucks. It's a little holder and they use it a lot for the um, projects from, um, Maybe Teresa, you can just hand me on that printer over there, that little um, banner. They use it for the little things from Kimberbell. If you just wanna flip it over here, Teresa is so wonderful to help us, thank you. See, oh, home of the free, I love it. And see that little banner went right on this. Um, so we do have them in stock and that's what a few of you had asked about. So I try to answer your questions in the next video because I know 
a lot of you have had and asked. And the other questions that I got quite often lately is, what was I wearing? Well, um, this is actually a design, a Christmas design with the Swarovski crystals. You can take um, an OSD bird design, which they have a lot of, and take and put the little crystals on it and through your software, add a little branch or whatever. Now, the sweater is the ugly Christmas sweater. What can I say? <laughs> but it's actually kind of fun. And what I did with the sweater, if you can look at this, this is a button that is actually, um, I've got a little clip on here that I can take off and you can see this is a button that has got, I did the embroidery on it and then I just cut it out and clamped it onto the back of a, a button and now I've got a little pin. So fun, fun things that are easy to do for holidays. Let's get into our project and show you. I did some uh, preparation and tried to work on this beautiful 850, which we have, uh, it's a new Bernina Air Threader. It's just a beautiful, some of you know I've fallen in love with the, uh, the four thread, three thread, and the two thread. Um, the next, uh, one of the videos in January that we're gonna do is going to be all on scarves using the two thread on this machine, and oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I also have a Baby Lock Triumph that I do love also, and I'm doing a lot of uh, four thread seaming on that too, but. This air threader was just easy to go, four steps, boom, 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 and I'm done. And I'll show you that as I'm going. This is the project. Now, it's a very simple, 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 easy uh, pillowcase that most of you can put together, uh, even if you're a beginner, a beginner maybe three hours, somebody who's been sewing for a while, uh, an hour and a half to two hours. And this is a, a very basic, project that we do have in our beginning sewing, but I wanted to show it to you because I think sometimes we overlook some of the really fun things we've had in the past and how simple it is to do and quite frankly, how wonderful somebody is, feels when they get something like this that's personalized with their name on it. And these are boys. I've got a lot of grandsons, as you probably know, eight or nine grandsons and one granddaughter. <laughs> so all the grandsons get all the deer and the bear and the hunters and you know things that they like to do. So this particular one is done with Moda fabric. I um, personalized it, the cuff of it with the, the name. And I made this in a little bit longer uh, size. You can personalize these, I'll measure it for you. You know, this is about 34 inches. Let's see, yeah, about 34 inches when it's finished for a um, king size pillow. You could make it about 30 inches, 36 inches, um, I mean 34 inches if you want to make it a little clean and a, th um, a 30 inch to 32 inches would be a regular size pillow. So you kind of decide what size their pillow would be. A real, um, everybody always has at least one regular size pillow. So you can really do that. And what I buy for fabric, and I think this is really key when you're doing it, and on this project this happened because I've done some others in these boxes I'm gonna show you when we're finished. And what I normally do, if the project says three quarters of a yard, don't buy just three quarters, buy a yard. And I know from experience from making a lot of these that you really do wanna do that because you're always gonna use that quarter of a yard in something. So here's a, um, on the next ones that I'm going to do. I have two smaller and one larger pillowcase. And the um, what I've done is on this, I'm gonna have a little um, trim. I'm gonna have just that little trim at the top of the pillowcase. On this one, I didn't put a trim on the cuff. I could just put another little piece of trim. It's easy to do. I just didn't have colors that I like, so I went ahead and just did one. And this is the quickest and the easiest, so you might want to do that. But when you're buying this, you want a quarter yard of your uh, simple trim. You want, I always buy a half a yard of the cuff because it says a quarter yard, but you want at least a half a yard because you're going to make more than one pillowcase. Then when you go to do the actual fabric, buy the fabric. Like I said, I would buy nothing less than a yard. Now let me show you what is really fun. I'm not going to actually make this one for you, but I want to show you the fabric. It's a Hoffman fabric, and some of you know that I have a granddaughter in Paris, and isn't this fun? With the, I'll hold it up this way, and then I'll put it down so you can actually see it a little bit closer. And Nick, who is filming here today, could probably tell us where some of these are from, right, Nick? 
Can you tell me what this is? <laughs> he's gonna, he doesn't have a mic, so he's gonna put it on real quick. Um, see if the, those of you out there know what I'm talking about. Everybody should know this one, right? Everyone. But there's some real fun ones in the back uh, here. La Tour Eiffel. Yeah, what is this Th one? That's L'Arc de Triomphe. Okay, well, how do you say that? L'Arc de Triomphe. Oh, la okay, I'm gonna try that one. How about this one? I'm not sure about that one. I think, uh, is it, uh... <laughs> The Eiffel Something Tower? Something created by Gustave Eiffel, maybe, in the <laughs> 1800s. The highest building back then. Oh, wow. La Tour Eiffel. Yeah. How about here, this gray in the background? I, I, I'm not sure, but the Gallery Lafayette, maybe? Yeah, I perhaps? think it is. Yeah. yeah, it looks like Gallery yeah. Lafayette, because it's the two kind of together. Fun things on here, and that's going to be for the granddaughter. And then the cuff is actually going to be this. So you can see how the cuff would work. And then the little extra piece is going to be this. Now, so I want you to be able to know, and of course I've squared these all off, and I've used my, um, uh, it's really important that you're doing the right squaring off and everything when you're doing this, and I use the um, Ulfa cutter, well I, I don't use the Ulfa, I like the Quilter Select, and the Quilter Select mat, and I have the bigger one here, I know we're out of stock I guess on the big ones, but that's the one that I really use, and then I have a smaller one up here. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'm going to show you the first thing, if you're going to personalize your um, pillowcase, what you're going to do first is you need stabilizer, and you're going to go ahead and take your cuff, which is what I'm going to use on this black and uh, white. This is a uh, from one of my oldest grandsons, and his name is Timothy, and so this has been put on with, some of you already know, what's the topper I'm using correct, the water soluble. I use now the um, perfect stick, which is, you know, you, you use this over and over and over. I think these four ones I've used for all these pillowcases that I've made. So it lasts forever. Then um, I am using um, embroidery thread in the hoop. And then if you're using this, this happens to be done on the Luminaire. And so I use the pre-wound bobbins and you can see on the back, this is a white pre-wound, but on here, do you see what I've done? I use this twice because this is a, um, a type of perfect stick. It's an OSD. Um, I would suggest you buy the kits that we have because they are the easiest to use, but I have down here a wonderful little piece. And, and here's something that um, a lot of us do is we put these little things inside so you can remember what it is. A lot of times what I'll do too is um, actually write it on the um, on the end of the, the tube or I've got this in so good it's hard to get out. So the other thing that you can do is Mary does it all the time and she puts it on the outside of her her roll and then she rolls it up with the um, Hugo tape which is a nice thing too. But this is something new. This is actually from r &K. It isn't from OESD, but I do use the OSD ones too. And it's called the Stick Stitch Tear, or Tear Away. And I, it's different from Perfect Stick because, and I'll try and show you that a little bit. Um, it doesn't come in this packet. And right now, to my knowledge, it only comes in black. We're gonna try and get it in white too, but uh, if you're gonna be doing something like this in white, then use the Perfect Stick. And again, your bundle is really your best way to do this. So what I have done is I've taken this, you know, um, seam ripper, and it had, if you notice on here, there is a layer on the top. And do you see how I can pull that off with the seam ripper real easily? And then underneath is the sticky part. And that's what this is. It's real sticky underneath. And that seam ripper, I just go across, pull it up, plop down my design and I'm ready to go. And because this is in here so tight, I used it twice because I did two pillowcases. One is here, I'm gonna show you, I've sewn it a little bit already. And then the second one, I could just put it right below the first one. I pulled it off, as you can see, the designs have been pulled off here. And then I put the second one on and did the designs. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tape off and you want to keep this because, um, although for this design, I guess I can just pull it off real quick. If you haven't done this before, I would really like you to see how I'm doing it because 
see how I pulled the other one off? Just hold it. It's not gonna pull through because it's not real heavy, um, thick stitching. If it was real thick, then you'd have to be careful and hold your finger by each design as you're pulling it out. But with this one, it's gonna come off. See how it comes off very, very easily? Now, there is a little bit of extra in the center and I take that tear away, I mean that uh, water soluble topper off if I can. Otherwise, what I do is I take, and always you wanna do this, get yourself some rags, some old towels. Um, in fact, I did, I cut up one of the old towels and surged it off on the serger before I get ready to sew. I wanna just make sure I've got um, my seam set up right. So I'll put this down and well, let me put it down flat and then I'll put this on here. And now, can you tell me what I'm gonna do next? And I think you already know. We're gonna take this water soluble um, bottle, which I got my own. If you saw the one of the last videos, I had to use their bleach one here and wash it all off. So now I have one. <laughs> and I put the water on the back so they know what it is that I'm using. And I give it a couple of sprays. Then I take the towel and I really pat it. Cause what am I doing? I'm removing the water soluble topper. It's real easy to come off. And if you see that anything is glaring a little bit, then you want to do it again. Then I take another one and just do the moisture. Cause I'm going to show you how to use this when we're through. So that, and that's done right on the little wool felt pad. It's just a great little tool that you can use when you're doing something. Now I'm going to take this to the ironing board and I'm going to press it. And that's the piece that I'm going to use. So now I'm going to bring it over here and you can see I've also taken the little piece that's going to be the, what we call the, um, um, the, the accessory or the little, um, the, the, the one that's really kind of fun as a little added decoration. And so that little strip I have pressed in half already. No, it's not quite done yet, so let me see again. And again, if you've got a wonderful Laura Star like I have here, the wonderful part, and we do this all the time in our classes and our studios, we have it set so that it will go off if we haven't used it for a while because we don't want somebody walking out of a classroom and not using it. And it's true at home too. You know how busy you can get and involved with your projects. So by having that, and I can turn that off if I want to, but I leave mine on because it reminds me that uh, I never have to worry about it staying on overnight or forgetting about it. So once that button is going to come up, it will tell me and I can just give it a nice little press, which I'm doing right now in a fold. And then I'm gonna take my pad because the wool pad is the most important part of this design. You can hear now it's all completely ready to go. And what am I doing with the design? Does anybody out there know? Which side do I put the design on? I'm gonna give it a little bit stronger towel. I'm gonna to put the design down because, and then I'm just giving it, give it a nice press. I'm not doing steam. It's just a nice hot press. And you can see it's dry already. And perfect. I mean, you can see that the, um, the design on here is just a really, really nice, nice. And I could give it a shot of steam if I want to make sure that the, I don't want to stretch out my panel, my cuff, but I do want to make sure that there's no puckering whatsoever on my design. So you can see on here now I have a perfect design. Next step. This is what I wanted to show to make sure everyone knows this. There's a a method for this, it's called the hot dog uh, pillowcase. I'm sure many of you have made it before. And the other thing I did that I wanna show you, and Nick, if you can pick this up, I did the marker in the center here, but let me show you on here, because I think you can see, this is a new marker by, I love it, by Alex Anderson. It's the first time I tried it in this. And look, and I'm gonna put an X on there. Can you see that? And then watch what I'm gonna do. On the other end, there's an eraser, and I can just erase it. Now it will erase on its own after five to seven days, or one to seven days, I guess. I could see it erasing already on some of them, but look, it's gone, and that's what's really great. This is my little scrap piece that I am I used when I uh, wanna do my first seam to see if everything is working right. So on here, well, let me use it on here too, because I see I've got one 
done. I want to, I'm going to leave it on there because I'm going to show it again. Now on here, this is the first piece that you want to put underneath on your cutting mat once you've got everything cut out. The, this is the small cuff. Then on top, of, and you're going to put it right sides up. On top of the cuff, you're going to take the body of the pillow and you're going to put that up here. And again, it's going to be right sides up. And this drives me, most of you know me quite well, that I have to get this, especially if you've got black. There's a lot of lint on here from all the threads going along. So the, your lint roller is really important when you're doing this. Now there's one last step, and that is the, um, the little decorative piece. And you're going to put all the raw edges together. Okay, and we're just going to put them along there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin them. Now, why in the world, people ask me, would you have three zircles in your sewing room using them all at the same time? You know why? <laughs> because of this. I start by doing the pinning right here. And this is one place where I do use pins. These I can use when I'm doing the side seam, but on here, on, when I'm doing all of these three la layers together, it's really nice to have a pin. And I'll bring it all the way to the end, and then, I'm going to straight up, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll, and once I've got the pins in, I'll go this side. I'm not going to do this whole thing right now, but I'm going to show you the idea. One more over here. And the reason I like these is because you can take the pins to do the pinning, and then when you take them out to do your uh, sewing, you've got a blank zircle, and you can just put them over there. I know it sounds crazy, but it's wonderful when you've got that organization. Now watch what we're going to do here. We're going to take this little, this is the body of the pillowcase, and we're just going to roll it up. Remember, it was the right side down. And look what's underneath there, that little cuff. And this name is right up here at the top because this is the bottom of the cuff. And that's the way it's going to look when it is turned right side out. So we're going to take the right side and attach it right here. And then you're going to take your pins again. And you're going to go ahead and pin that all the way down, all the way to here, and all the way to the end, evenly all along. And you're going to come up with something that looks like this. And once you've got it all pinned, of course I sewed it with a four thread over edge on this beautiful machine. And now I have it enclosed. Now on the first pillow that I made for Timothy, I did the, um, the letters in black. Um, I, you know, I thought, well, black. And then the second one I did white. It shows up, I don't know, a little bit better maybe, but it's just kind of fun to have. You can personalize them. You could call a favorite name. You could call it, um, you know, something that's fun, maybe a bear hunter or deer hunter or whatever they are. Now, do you see how I'm just pulling this tube out? That's all I'm doing is just pulling it to the right side. And watch what's going to happen. This is the, the magic of it. And those of you that have done this forever, you know exactly what I'm doing. There's the name coming out, just perfect, where it should be. And voila. Now you have your... Let's see, Tim, are, I mean, Nick, are you overhead or are you? Overhead. Okay, so I'm going to put it this way so you can see it. And there's your pillowcase. Now I'm going to take that to the iron. I'm going to press it very, very carefully so that this nice um, little extra piece, see that little extra piece that was right in there that I was showing you before? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these together. So I'll take it over to the iron now and do the pressing so you can see what I'm talking about. Now I press this um, to the inside here. You can see the inside of the cuff. And I started sewing so you could, it wouldn't take too long for you to see it. But you can see this wonderful um, machine is just, oh, just cuts and sews that beautiful four thread edge beautifully. And now this is why I need my extra blank um, zircle over here because it's so easy to just flip from one to the next. Now as you get up to this area right here where the machine is, very important that you've matched up your cuff and that you take your pin out because we had a new sewer in our store uh, yesterday who was telling me that 
she had gone to um, another big box store and had bought all her machines there, and nobody had ever told her, ever, about sewing over pins. And so what do you think had happened to her machine? It had a big problem. <laughs> and so she was very thankful um, that we helped her and showed her what was um, doing. In fact, I think she's in the process of a new machine. Now I'm gonna sew off the edge here and the reason that I'm leaving a nice long tail is I like this um, this little it's a strange name, but it's called a hooky, which I think is great. And uh, it's a little piece like this. So it comes in this, and see you can see how the tail goes right in here. And I can take that now and pull it right back into the seam, which is really great. I don't have time to do it right now because I want to finish up and show you what else we have done. But now we're going to take this. Now I could seam. I, I press this first, and then I go across the top edge and press the top. I won't show you all of it because I want you to see how um, what happens with it. But look at how quick and easy and nice we have a new pillowcase and how fast. The um, ones that I have in the boxes are really fun. You've probably seen them before. This is um, for one of the grandsons, and then I put the little um, towels, of course, with a little card in there. And then um, this is another one that's really kind of fun. Um, this was for David. And again, um, I made a longer one. These are bigger boys, so they need um, bigger pillowcases. Although a couple of them like the smaller ones too. So sometimes I'll make them double. This is another one. Uh, this is for Daniel. That's got a, again, a little towel too. And this was a little bit shorter. And uh, Although Daniel is a six foot five one, so I don't know why I did that. <laughs> he does have some small pillows too. And then this is really a fun one. This is the uh, one for my son. Um, and again, he is a real avid bird watcher like his dad. For those of you that join our club, you are going to get the step by step by step directions on how to do this, even though you have become, maybe you took our beginning class a lot times you don't remember that and it's just a good thing to know for the future so again thank you so much for joining us and hope to see you next week